Hi, and welcome to the next part of my series on HTML and CSS for beginners. My name's Kevin, and today we're looking at putting some pictures on our website, so let's go and do that right now. Now, images are a pretty big part of the web today. Without them, our pages would be pretty boring, so let's see what we can do. Now, image tags are one of the few that don't have a closing tag. Uh, one of the other ones we've already seen with that is the meta tag up here. So when we put our meta tag in, you notice I never closed the meta tag. Um, other ones include things like BR and link. Uh, and yes, there is a link but tag, but it's not the same as our A tags that we've already looked at. We'll worry about that later. And there's a few others that don't close, but there's not too many, uh, and images are one of them. And it doesn't close because all the information we need is in the opening tag. So let's uh, let's go and put an image in. The image tag is nice and simple. So I'm gonna, I have my first paragraph here right after my first paragraph. Let's delete that comment that I don't need anymore and put in an IMG. And that's it, that's an image tag. But well, there's something missing, obviously. And it's a little bit like links. A, a link without an href doesn't really do anything because it's not actually linking somewhere. So an image tag just like this, let's save and refresh, and it makes a little space, but there's nothing there because the browser doesn't know what it's supposed to put there. Sadly, it's not the href attribute again. That would be too easy. And image, it's src, image source. So same idea as before, I put my two little quotation marks and we're good to go. So the first one I'm gonna do, uh, I've got this beautiful picture of a sunset right here. So I'm gonna come here and do copy image address. And I'm, this is somewhere else on the internet. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna paste it right here. And I'm gonna save that and hit refresh. And there's my sunset. So just like my links, this is an absolute path. This is somewhere else on the internet. I don't have a picture of a sunset on my computer anywhere. This is on another page that I found. If I'm linking somewhere else, I need to put the HTTP. Without that, the image will not work properly. But what if I have a picture that I took or a picture I have on my computer that I wanna use? Well, it's a lot like this. And as I mentioned early on, everything we need has to be in our root folder. So I've already gone and saved a picture here and I've put it into my root folder. So I have my index that we looked at in the last video, we created the page two really quickly. And then I have this hamster.jpg that I've brought in and just dropped into my first website folder that was on my desktop. So let's add that. Uh, let's go and put this one after my second paragraph. So I'll come in here and put img src and what I want to do now is I want to put my the name of the file, so hamster.gpg. I'm going to save that, I'm going to refresh, and it didn't work. And if ever you see this, it means it can't find your picture. And I always have a lot of trouble spelling hamster, so because I put a P in there, hamster, instead of hamster. Let's save that and refresh, and there comes my picture. So spelling is very, very important. That's the same for links, but it's a little different for links. If you're working on a link and you, you know, say I put Google without the E, well, it just won't find the page. So somebody clicks on it, it doesn't go where they were expecting it to. With a picture though, when you misspell it, so like me, I like spelling hamster with a P, it gives me this little broken image and it doesn't look so good. So get rid of that. Make sure you spell things correctly, very important. And there's my cute little hamster and the page is looking much better now. There's something missing though. Um, for an image tag to actually be valid and acceptable code, we need to include a second attribute. And the next attribute, so I'm gonna come right after this quotation, I'm gonna put a space and write ALT equals, and put my quotation marks. ALT stands for alternate text. And it's pretty much a description of your picture. So a beautiful sunset. And let's come down to my hamster, ALT t is equal to an adorable hamster with no p. Refresh and it looks exactly the same. It doesn't actually change your picture when you include the alt text or alternative text. I'm always just going to call that alt text since we're just writing alt and it's much easier to say. So alternative text serves a really important purpose. And for an image tag, you need to put it for the tag to be considered valid. And there's two times where it gets used, or maybe more, but there's two important times it gets used. 
Say someone for some reason has disabled images on their website, or let's say the internet's really slow, for some reason the image just doesn't load or there was a problem, they will see the description, so that's kind of handy. And it's also for people who are using screen readers, you know, they might have a visual impairment, they're visiting the site, they can't really see the picture, the screen reader is reading all the text, and when it gets to a picture, it's actually going to read the alt text. Some people try and cheat systems a little bit. They're using their alt tags for search engine optimization, which is a completely other topic. But if you're doing your alt text properly, it should be a description of the photo. You should be able to read this and know what the photo is without actually seeing it. You can get very detailed in them. A beautiful sunset with an uh, orange sky over... Uh, you know, the ocean with some rocks. Here it would be a, an adorable hamster on a gray table with a blurry background. You know, we want to make it as clear as possible for the person who's someone who's visiting the site who might not be able to see what they're looking at. So alt text is something that's important and you should use it properly. Now, uh, another thing that's sort of an important thing with images is you might see them written sometimes like this. So I'll do it for both of them. So a space there at the end and then with that. Um, because there's no closing image tag, the image is just an image and it works like that. So because there's no closing tag, uh, in the old days of HTML4 and previous, you had to put this forward slash in the opening tag just to also let the browser know it was then closing. So you're closing it without having to add the extra tag. With HTML5, you don't need to do this anymore. Uh, some people are still into sort of more strict writing of code, um, but it's becoming more standard and it's not necessary. HTML5 is smart enough to know that what's going on. So I'm never really gonna be doing it, but just so you know, if you ever do see it with the forward slash close in there, um, what it's doing and why people are doing it. But again, if you want to, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with it. It works perfectly fine. And if it makes more sense to you, Awesome, but I'm lazy. The less keystrokes I have to do, the better, so I don't bother with it anymore. So we've got two pictures on my site now. The first one using an absolute path and the second one using a relative path. And well, that's it. Uh, and I hope that makes sense. If you have any trouble getting images to work on your site for any reason, leave a comment below and let me know. I'll see if I can help you out. Hope you like this video. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.